JSP Third Gen Prelude, episode number five. In this episode, we dive into some new product ideas for the BA4 Third Gen Prelude chassis. The first product that I decided to come up with is going to be a rear brace for the subframe on the car. While a rear subframe brace is nothing new to the Honda world, it is pretty new to the BA4 3rd Gen Prelude. I wasn't aware of any that were currently available. On most front wheel drive Hondas, the rear lower control arms actually attach to the unibody of the car. But on the Prelude, it has a unique subframe that is a sheet metal welded unit that bolts to the car. This is most likely done by Honda because this car was also available with four wheel steering. The whole rear suspension of this car almost looks like the front suspension of a normal Honda. It has a tension rod setup, it has a tow link, and the spindle itself looks like it could actually receive an axle if you wanted it to. The subframe itself is actually constructed really well, but I did find one weak point. The outer flange areas that attach the lower control arm to the subframe are just spot welded on thin sheet metal units. While it's likely that this isn't a really a significant weak point, it is probably a good idea to be able to brace this structure to reduce any cracking or problems in the future, especially because these are pretty old chassis now. By connecting the left and right lower control arms together with the brace, this removes the sheer possibility of the tabs that are spot welded onto the subframe, just adding a little bit of extra strength. So what does it take to make a product like this? Well, it first starts with the idea. I take some measurements on the car, and then I go design and CAD. This is the final design, but it probably took five or six different iterations to get to this point. I started by actually just drawing one side and then 3D printing it to see how it fit to the chassis. After I was happy how the one side fit, then I went ahead and 3D printed an entire brace just to verify the fitment before machining. The process for programming a CNC machine starts with generating tool paths, which are movements of the machine based around the solid model. The software allows you to choose different tools that you can put into the machine, as well as different movements of those tools, including top facing or contouring or pocketing or even rough machining a 3D shape. The software uses two different things to generate the tool paths. It's either going to use line geometry, which is just simple lines and arcs, or it's gonna use different faces or surfaces on your solid model to generate the toolpaths. Once you're done programming, you go through a verification process. This is what you're watching now. This actually simulates the machine's movement to verify that all of the settings that you've put in for programming the part are done correctly. If you've made any mistakes, generally you can catch it in this process. Once you're happy with the verification, then it's time to move into the CNC machine and make a part. Here we can see the ball nose end mill contouring the insides of the pockets on the brace. And here's the finished product installed on the car. Because of the 3D printing multiple revisions, I was able to get the back side of the brace to fit the subframe pretty well. I'm happy with the fitment here. Another product I've been working on for the third gen Prelude isn't necessarily gonna be something that I'm going to sell, but it could potentially. This is a JIC carbon fiber strut bar designed for the rear of a Mazda RX-8. I really like the design of these strut bars and the carbon fiber matches the Mugen airbox really well. So I think it's gonna look really good in the engine bay. The obvious problem is that the mounting brackets are nowhere near even coming close to bolting onto the third gen Prelude. So of course I have to go in and design something that's gonna make it work. This model actually isn't completed yet. This is probably about the third revision and it's fitting on the car, but it's not exactly what I want. The fitment on the strut tower of the Prelude is a little bit tricky. The way that the sheet metal overlays over itself, it doesn't give you a flat plane that you can mount a bracket to. So the bottom side of the brackets actually have to have little spacers or risers for it to fit correctly. The whole diameter of the brackets also needs to be opened up a little bit to fit the hardware. Either that or I could find a way to make a top hat that receives a bolt and then I could use like a socket head or something. The next product I've been working on is a hood riser set for the Prelude. 
This also works on the EF Honda Civic, coincidentally. This was a pretty simple piece to design, probably only took about two 3D printed revisions before I was happy with the fitment. The design and programming goes the same as the subframe brace on this one. The last thing I've been working on is probably my favorite and most important product for any car like this. My daily driver is a 91 Civic sedan, and one of my biggest gripes is that every time I get gas, I have to set my gas cap on my trunk. So I decided to come up with a solution that coincidentally, again, works on both the BA4 Prelude and the EF Honda Civic. It's a billet gas cap holder that's machined from 6061, and it uses rare earth magnets to hold it to the gas door. These are incredibly strong and can hold up to 10 pounds a piece. At the same time, I've done quite a bit of pocketing on the back side of this thing to make it lightweight. It's easy to install, just snaps into place, and solves that problem of where do I put my gas cap? Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're actually going to be pulling the H22 engine out of the car to get the engine bay ready for paint. Stay tuned.